how has Kyle been able to take advantage of this kind of really crappy situation you guys have been in the past few games? Uh, you know, I think it just, uh, his level of aggression has been terrific. Um, getting downhill, you know, staying aggressive in, in the open floor when we get stops. Um, you know, and it's been a big part, not just him, but everybody that we're out. Uh, once we can get stops, rebound and get out, you know, I think we're, we're a dangerous team. Um, you know, it's, it's tough now to, you know, the teams are playing on their heels. We don't have to slow the tempo or just take advantage of it. And I think our guys have kind of bought into that. We're spacing correctly. We're running wide, running hard. And that just opens up lanes for everybody. You know, we're opening up corner threes or getting downhill. We're getting to the free throw line, which we got to quite a bit tonight. So when we're able to do that, I think it, it helps everyone. He's talked about the effect of vets like KCP um, having him around and stuff on the team. But what do you think being spending so much time around Corey and Denny? What effect do you think that's had on his game, if any? On Kyle? Mm -hmm. um, I think they're probably, you know, getting a lot from him as well. Um, his ability to play make, you know, um, you know, to push in the open floor. Uh, but I also think, too, that those guys are learning to kind of read him, you know, where to be. You know, they're, they're benefiting a lot from what he's doing right now. So I think Denny's done it as well. Um, you know, getting out and running after, after misses, I think that is kind of a thing that everyone's seeing can work for us. And it's, we've been, been able to really see an uptick in our office, offensive efficiency since we've been doing that. Do you excuse the turnovers to say, if you get 13 threes or 16 threes, yeah, <laughs> no, you can do that. <laughs> no, not at all. And, and then that kind of goes with it, though. I mean, it, it, with the freedom to run and push and play, there, there's a certain degree of accountability. Um, so turnovers are going to happen. I get it. There's, a, there's turnovers of, of aggression. And then there's also the ones that are of the careless nature. Eliminate some of those. I don't know. I couldn't give you a percentage right now, which were, um, you know, you know, tip the scale, but, you know, 15 turnovers for 28 points, I believe it's, you can't do that. You expect to win a game. Obviously we were able to hold on, but you're, you're, you're helping your team. You're helping your, your opponent rather. Um, and you're not getting shots at the rim. So trying to take care of it, especially if we're going to push and play in the open floor, it's, it's a big part of the game for us. Wes, is there anything about Kyle's personality that helps him shine in clutch moments, particularly with the long ball. Yeah, you know what? He, he's he's a confidence guy. So um, he's played in big moments, and you know he's had a, a big role on a championship team. So I don't I don't know if it's it's that or, or he just he, he's not worried about. It. He's not afraid of the moment. You know. So I think it's it's one of those things where maybe Denny, you know, Corey, and those guys can can get a little bit of that. You know, see that you know he, he's going to play with some poise. Yes, he's going to make mistakes. We all do. Um, but he's not afraid of the moment. So I give him a lot of credit. You know, he stepped up, made big plays late. Was it the ball movement in the fourth quarter or was Kyle just on fire? No, it was mainly the ball movement. You know, I think he, you know, he got going because he got downhill. Uh, we did a better job handling and attacking their zone. Um, and also, you know, when we were able to get out and play, um, we were moving the ball, we were spaced correctly. And I think, you know, the ball found the open man. That was him tonight. Well, do you, do you hope that Kyle tries to get downhill as much as he has the last couple of games when you have your full complement of I hope so. Players? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I don't think it that side of how we play has anything to do with who's on the floor. Um, you know, it, when we get stops, we get to run. That's You have a license to play. And I think it's important for our guys to, to understand there's value in that. Um, and you get to reap the reward. <laughs> it's, you know, it, it seems rather simplistic, but – yeah, if we can defend, you know, finish possessions and rebound, then let, yeah, by all means, let's get out. Um, and we've seen how effective we can be when we do that. I know you have 19 wins. I know they all count the same. But given all that your team is, all the obstacles it has all of a sudden too, does this one maybe have more of a catapult effect? Or I hope so. I mean, I thought honestly the, the win in, in Salt Lake was, was one of those moments where, you know, we hadn't been playing well. And you're on the road, you're on a four-game trip. It's the last game on a long trip. And uh, you're just trying to find a, a way to muster up enough to win in a, in a very difficult environment. So that's another one of those type wins. But to your point, I mean, 19 wins, they all, they all count. Um, and, you know, I don't think at the end of the year we're going to say, you know what, that one is going to mean that much more um, at, the, at that time. So I think the, the important thing is can we learn from it? You know, and I thought we did because we, we, we had a stretch there. We struggled offensively. 
Um, they junked the game up with zone and pressure. We didn't handle it well. And it's an area that we have to continue to work on when we get a chance to work on it. Uh, but the, the fact that we were able to kind of recenter ourselves and, and finish the game with a, with a level of poise, I thought that was important. Chase. Hey, Wes, uh, going back to the turnovers, you guys had, uh, you were able to limit not only the turnovers, but the points off turnovers in the second half. Was there an adjustment you guys made that kind of uh, cleaned things up? No, I just thought we were, uh, you know, a little bit, we were a little cleaner with our spacing. Um, and I thought we, we kind of settled down versus their pressure in their zone. Um, and that's where the ball movement, you know, comes into play. We were able to find the open man and make, make big shots. Uh, I think in the first half, we were kind of hesitant. We were tentative. Um, and it just kind of lends to that type of defense. You, you can't play shell defense versus zone or shell offense. Rather, you have to move it, you have to drive it, and you have to attack it. And we were a bit passive, I think, early. Um, you know, now we're playing against the clock. Um, and they, and they do a terrific job. They're handsy. They're active. Um, I mean, we know they're going to go to it. It's just you know, a matter of when and how we can respond when we see it. And um, Kispert has now reached double figures in four out of his last six. Um, what do you think he can take from this stretch uh, moving forward? Just another, you know, uptick in his growth. You know, I think it's, you know, it's a good sign to see that he, he's shown a level of consistency with his play. He hasn't shot the ball great, but he, he doesn't let, let that limit him. He's still trying to defend. He's cutting. He's moving. He's trying to play the right way. Um, so just continue to do that. And I think good things happen. When, uh, you know, you, you do the right thing and you put yourself in a good position to have success. Neil. Hey, Coach, you went with Denny to start, presumably to uh, guard LaMelo. What would you see from him? And you kept going with him, even though he struggled a little bit down the stretch. Yeah, you know, it, it wasn't just, uh, you know, to, to guard LaMelo. It was also to give us another ball handler on the floor. And it's, it's tough for Brad. And I know he's, you know, he's been incredible with, you know, his ability to play make and his unselfishness. Um, but you're trying to get the best, your best player, the ball and, and teams are going to, you know, key in on him if he has to facilitate on top of try to make things happen. So, you know, just giving us a little bit more balance as far as ball handling, give us a little more spatial, um, balance as well. So I think it was twofold, but I was uh, comfortable with what he was doing, you know, and I thought he, he did a terrific job. Um, you know, at, at times it's, it's not going to always be pretty because we're asking him to run the point and he's not really familiar with a lot of what we do at that position, but trying to keep it simple and minimize the mistakes. Um, I give him a lot of credit. You know, he, he tried to do the right thing and, and late he stepped up, you know, and I thought we saw that, that group, the small ball lineup with DB out there play exceptionally well. Um, he came back with Gaff and, and, and had a good stretch. When he is 0 for 6, is there anything that you or maybe Pat Delaney say to him or you kind of just let him be? I think it depends. I mean, the, you know, the 0, to, 0, 0 and 6 or 0 and 8, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. So what kind of shots are they? Um, are those the shots we want? If those, if they are, keep shooting them. And I think you have to, you know, have a, you know, a, a quick memory at times. You know, when you're doing the right thing and it's not going well, all right, that's fine. You know, if, if they're not, then it has to be addressed. But I had no problem with, you know, the looks he took and, you know, how, are they, how they were created. Uh, I still want him to be aggressive. Christos. Hello, coach. Congratulations on the win. Uh, in the last three games, Bradley Bill had 35 assists and just eight turnovers. What part of, uh, how big a uh, factor of uh, your ball movement and strong selection he is? Uh, I, I think I heard you correctly. You were talking about Brad's ball movement? Yes. Yeah, no, I, I think he's been great at it. You know, I think it's, uh, it's, it's hard at times to, you know, move a guy who's you know, kind of been the focal point of the offense and all of a sudden he's got to be a playmaker. Um, so we're trying to find that mix and that balance of, you know, getting him involved, getting him off of it to get it back or having him orchestrate, knowing that, you know, teams are going to blitz him. They're going to, you know, show him different looks to get the ball out of his hands. And that's where I think he's, you know, he, he's shown the great poise and patience. Um, and I got to give our other guys credit. You know, they're figuring it out how to, you know, space correctly. Gaff has done a better job of finding, the, you know, the short roll in the pocket um, and facilitating from there. So it has a trickle down effect that, you know, there's a trust factor that he trusts those guys to be in the right spots. Those guys in the right spots now are facilitators and making the right reads. And that's where we've seen an uptick in the number of threes, but also the quality of it, which we've shot them. Thank you very much, coach. Last question to Rafael. 
was last game you guys didn't manage to close the game. Tonight you did and, it, and even had an 11-0-1. What different changes would you say were the difference in this game? Say that last part again, I'm sorry. What defensive changes would you say were the difference on this game? No, I thought we, you know, we defended, you know, relatively well, um, you know, both these last two games. It's down the stretch. We got timely stops. The other night, we, you know, I thought we fouled. Um, and tonight, I think we only gave up 13 free throws. So, you know, not, not that we were perfect, but we did a better job with, you know, our body position. Um, you know, defending without fouling is a big part of the game. Um, we downsized a bit, start switching, you know, late, you know, but. I think bottom line is just, you know, the, the, the moment and understanding what's what my responsibilities are in that moment, you know, and it uh, thankfully worked out in our favor, you know, it was not always perfect, but just trying to find ways to consistently guard and, you know, when the game gets tight, can we, you know, figure it out and make, uh, make the right adjustments. I looked like I celebrated all last night because I, I feel like I look tired as hell on the court. Um, I didn't feel that good today. I don't know if, if why. Uh, not COVID, don't worry. Um, but I managed to break through. Um, how I celebrated, though, I went uh, to a nice restaurant yesterday just with the close family, but uh, nothing late, so um, I can get ready for the game. <laughs> The ball movement, we're sharing the ball, we're moving the ball, we're trusting each other, uh, and we're making shots. We're making shots, the players are stepping stepping up, Brad, Kuz, of course, all the guys are missing, uh, and they're also a big part of our offense, but everybody's, met, um, everybody's stepping up their game and, and doing what they need to do. And I think uh, we're, we're playing great together. You're good. Guys, yeah. How has he not just taken advantage on the court, but in terms of leadership style? He says he's kind of one of the main guys to kind of still in the yeah. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle talks um, to a lot of players, and, 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 he's, and he's a veteran. He got, you know, he got something that a lot of people won this a ring. And um, we all capable of his. We all know what he's capable of. We all know his abilities. We all know he's a good player. Um, he's playing with confidence. He's shooting the ball good, and um, you know, since he started playing with me one on one, he also plays better one on one. And um, I'm just hoping he's just gonna keep going. And I think the sky's the limit for him, and he's a big he's a big part of our team. He, he didn't he didn't he didn't shout out or mention me, but it's a big part. I can tell you that. <laughs> Yeah. Just everybody believe in him. I mean, he had big he had big shots for us in the beginning of the year, and throughout the season he stepped up and he took big shots and he made them. So why not shoot him again and again and again? You know. I enjoy. I enjoy. I mean, I mean, it's kind of crazy for me to think that um, I'm playing partly the point and I'm guarding point guards. It's something that um, is very versatile, and, and that's that's what I love to ha like to help the team with. I mean, the, the coaches trust me, and um, they know what I'm capable of, and, and they give me big tasks, and I and I feel like I'm doing 100% uh, whatever I can to help the team and uh, help us win. I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's not the easiest, right? It's not easy at all, but I'm learning. I'm gaining experience, and I feel like it's it's just going to be better with time. Mm -hmm. I know that's kind of a loaded question. Yeah. No, you're good. Um, did I know if I was versatile? I, I mean, since I was young, I wasn't, like, always tall. So, like, for me... I was running like the guard position as I grew up and I just, I think grew, I don't know how I many in inches, how many, probably like six, seven inches. Is it, is it make sense? All right. So yeah, six, seven inches. Makes sense. Oh uh, yeah. I grew up six, seven inches. 
six, seven inches. And um, I just stayed with the ball, you know. I was always fast for my height, and I had the legs to guard players and, and also to, to, to play some guard, the guard positions. So um, I'm just improving from here, you know, just adding more to my game. Probably 14. I had a, a low, a, a um, bad low back injury that prevented me from playing the whole year. And suddenly, after like, yeah, they were like every every day they were like, want like, you know. So like, it was crazy for me. But uh, I'm here now with my height, and I like it. So. <laughs> It's not easy. A lot of guys that come in and fill the spots, like they, they're not really a part of us. They don't really practice. They they didn't really practice with us with us as much, and and it's not easy. But the guys uh, know how to welcome the guys that come in coming in, and I feel like we're just united. We're together, and we play together, and 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 we trust each other, and it's very important, especially when a lot of guys are out is to fight and everybody brings his 120%, so. Can you repeat it? What are some of the most challenging things about the offense? Um, the most challenging is like, sometimes like you guard somebody on defense so much and like, sometimes you feel kind of like, uh, I won't say tired, like a little fatigued. And there's a, a small player like pressing on you and you need like to go go over and call a play. It's not the most easiest sometimes. But I feel like um, I have a lot of guys near next to me that really support me and really give me tips on how like also to fit in the point guard position. And um, I was just enjoying today to find them and make plays for others and, and create because you know Brad got a lot of heat on him, um, other players. So for me, bringing the ball up and running the offense, it, it really helps the team and, and get pressure off Brad. So I enjoy, and Brad enjoy also. Yep. Definitely, definitely. I mean, I'm sorry that I didn't mention mention KCP. I mean, it's not also KCP. It's a lot of it's a lot of other players. I'm not gonna mention everybody and what they say to me right now. But uh, yeah, KCP is is a big part, and and he he always comes and and, and laughs with me and, and and tells me what tells me what I do I'm doing wrong, and and he does it great. I mean, I'm I love taking advice from KCP. Another guy with a with a ring with with him, and um, he's a good he's a great dude. He's a great dude off the court, and he's a great player on the court. So, Coach mentioned that uh, for your birthday, um, you told the person that you have to sing. <laughs> well, they they I I sang all last year for all the guys, and um, I don't know. I mean, when I told myself I'm not gonna be a rookie anymore, I'm not gonna tease the rookies. So. We're good now, maybe in a couple of years when we're going to have new rookies coming in, maybe I'll do it. But for now, I'm going to leave them alone. Thank you. I'm trying to be nice. Chase. Hey, Denny, uh, happy birthday. Uh, Thank you. Another night for you where you were given a really difficult defensive assignment, you know, LaMelo Ball. Um, you're getting that seems to happen often, and it's been all different types of players Jimmy Butler, Donovan Mitchell. Just what's it like for you to get, have that trust from the coaching staff? It's a big one when the, when the coaches trust you like that and give you those assignments, um, especially guarding experience uh, or the best, best players on the other team. It's, it's an honor for me. I mean, to help the team is like that and like help getting the W, it's, it's, it's a big part, and, and I love it. And um, Corey Kispert is starting to, it seems like he's starting to figure it out. You were in his shoes a year ago as, as yeah. a rookie. Um, what have you seen from him lately? Do you feel like he's kind of starting to find his footing? Just being aggressive. 
he's just being aggressive. He he knows his role. He knows uh, in what spots to be. You know when when to cut, when to shoot. Very very good shooter. We I don't need to tell you that, but um, he got he got a lot of potential, and he just need to keep working hard. And then I see him working hard, so we're in a good spot, and just keep playing with confidence. Obviously, DeMar DeRozan was not on court tonight, but what for you was the biggest difference late in being able to close this one out? Uh, first, I'm praising my brother, Jesus Christ. Um, for me, it was, it was still a tough team because they've had our number, you know, the last few matchups and even the last few years, I would say. Um, so for us, we understood that they, they played a really tough Phoenix team last night and Definitely didn't go the way they wanted to, and we kind of had the mindset they they were going to come in aggressive, and uh, rightfully so. We got off to a good start, and they hit us back. Um, but you know, it was just a testament to our composure and our growth this year um, of being able to close out the game. And granted, they they got tough guys over there too who can put it in the basket. Um, you know, they got more than just two guys. You know, so that's well, tonight was a little even a little bit more tougher. They got a lot of guys who can put it on the floor. Very athletic, really good defenders. You know, the zone gave us problems again. Um, but for the most part, I think us just being able to stay poised and um, just figuring out a way to win. We've asked you about the ball movement. Um, Wes mentioned spacing tonight, which has also looked really good in the past couple of games. How have you guys gotten to that place where you feel like you can kind of run a little bit wider with a lot of ease? Uh, I mean, it's, it's just a lot easier. You know, we just, we just understand that, you know, we don't really have a point. Like, we just kind of just play, you know, we just free flow. Uh, you know, whoever gets to rebound, you know, if you got an opportunity, push it. If not, I'm going to push it. I'm going to look ahead to, to get guys the ball early in transition. Um, but it all starts with our defense. We get stops. We're able to get out, you know, get deflections, give, you know, limit them to one shot, and we get out. Uh, we're really tough to guard, you know, because we play fast. We have really good shooters, and we got guys, um, you know, who can penetrate and get to the basket. You know, and Kuz being aggressive as he is, as he's been the last few games, is – has been awesome for us, you know, and everybody's being aggressive. Everybody's hunting shots, you know. That's what we need. We need to get more shots up. We need to get more threes up. Um, we got to play a little faster, but the only way we do that is we defend. So, you obviously know what it's like to kind of shoulder a load and, and kind of step up when your team makes a shot, but you're seeing from Yeah, I mean, he's he's definitely uh, self-asserting himself. Uh, he's being super aggressive, uh, you know, and. He's he's he understands that he has an opportunity in front of him. You know, we we need him to do that. We need him to be aggressive. Um, and you know, he's had success with it. You know, like I said before, I think last game he, I still don't think he understands who he can be, what type of player he can be. You know, the levels he can reach. You know, he's so talented. He has great size. You know, his versatility can be used to his advantage. You know, night in and night out. Um, so, it's I think he's he's just kind of you know figuring out easier ways to score, easier ways to, you know, assert himself. Then you never know what a player who can play alongside him. What, what are you running about by that uh, goes beyond what you knew before? Um, it's tough because everybody kind of has a misconception about them or misperception about them. Um, like everybody, like with Russ, like, same thing like John has, you know, it was like everybody kind of has this outside opinion about another player. Uh, it was kind of the same with Kuz. Everybody's, oh, Kuz is this, Kuz is that. But Kuz is, Kuz is very talented. Like, Kuz can be a really good player in the league, you know, at his size, his versatility. Like I said, he has a mismatch every single night. Um, you know, and his IQ is super high. I think he doesn't get a lot of credit for that. Uh, he loves to think the game. He's a willing learner. Um, he accepts criticism. You know, he's not. You know, he doesn't think too highly of himself. Like, he's – he wants to win. You know, you can see that, you know. And uh, I'm still still learning him, still getting, you know, getting acclimated with him. But he's he's been great. You know, he's always in my ear of, you know, how he can help, what he can do better, um, you know, how he can help the team. And that helps us, man. And like I said before, he, he and Pope, they've, they've played in, in a system to where they know how to win games down the stretch. Um, playing tough environments, playing tough, you know, playoff situations, uh, you know, and how to close out games, you know. So, you know, definitely hats off to him and his his development. But I still think he has a long, long way he can he he has to go and that he can tap into honestly. Yeah. Take something special, unique. Take something special that you have not seen before. Take something special that you 
not only the history make the folk dance, but the worship of all Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it's tough. I mean, a lot of guys you you talk it, but you know, if, once the lights hit and cut on, you know, a lot of guys shy away from that. You know, um, when there's a draw, you know, we're we're gonna do that. You know, I'm gonna take shots. I'm gonna make plays, and Kuz is he's gonna take them. Like he's confident, and that's the type of player that he wants to be. That's who he can be. You know, so uh, it's exciting for me to know that I don't have to make every shot, take every shot down the stretch. You know, I can be able to keep defenses on their heels. You know, if I have something, I can take it. If not, I got plenty of shooters out here and plenty of guys and definitely Kuz out here with, you know, the most, probably most confidence in the fourth quarter out there. You know, he's going to, he's going to rise up and shoot it. So, um, like I said before, it's great that we, we have that type of confidence uh, and that we have this, this kind of, this chemistry that we have flowing right now. Brett, um, before, when you were John, they were, you know, in the league. They were in the league before you. Mm-hmm. Now that you have somebody, you know, somebody who's playing with you, who's you know, not been in the league as, as, as long as you have, how how is that sort of being the lead? But how is it sort of being the lead guy as opposed to having to adjust to, to the wall? And, and the- uh, this is is I'd be lying if I said it was easy. Uh, I think. Anybody who's a leader would say it's not easy uh, leading a team, but uh, it's it's one I'm prepared for and I'm excited about and that I embrace. You know, it's just definitely, uh, you know, from the standpoint of everything I do, my approach, you know, my mentality, you know, in the game, my body language, all that stuff has a direct effect on my teammates. And as a leader, sometimes you don't understand that. Uh, and it takes a long time to kind of, you know, develop that and understand it and kind of see that from the outside looking in. Uh, but when you have two, like I've had two really good, strong-minded point guards, you know, who were very vocal leaders, uh, who are exemplary leaders too on the floor. Um, so for me, it's just easy going to, coming into this role because I had so many guys I can learn from. Learn from Paul Pierce, learn from Trevor Reza, Mecca Okafor, Nene, uh, Martel Webster, the list goes on. You know, Alan Anderson, Al Harris, and Jared Dudley. Like I have, I had a lot of vets like that I played with over my course of my years and, you know, just soaking up that knowledge I learned from all of them and, and just implementing it now. Like granted, the game has changed and transitioned from when I first came into the league. It's like we, we play with two bigs. We don't play with two bigs anymore, you know. So um, just understanding, you know, just encouraging young guys that, you know, everybody can make it to the league, but how do you stay? You know, you have to do something that separates you from the next man. Um, you know, give coach a reason to want to play you. Um, and then understand as a young person that, you know, your game is just every game is a learning experience. Every game is a game to get better. You know, you're going to have, I told Denny this last year, you're going to have highs, you're going to have lows, but you need them all, you know, to develop into the player and the character that you need, you know, out here on the floor. So it's a stepping stone for me, uh, but I'm definitely more than prepared for it. Brad, where do you feel like those misconceptions about you come from? The internet. Why do people on the internet feel that way about him? He's light skinned. You like skin too, Ava? People probably feel some way about you. I know. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I, don't, I really wish I, I understood why. Um, why there's a? I mean, being in LA, there's always a spotlight on you. You know, everybody's going to have this magnifying glass, and especially being on Bronze team, everybody's going to, you know, be locked into every single thing that everybody does on the floor. But um, I think, like I said at the beginning of the year, he now has. A, like he can flap his wings, you know, he can, he can breathe, he can relax, he can go play, you know, he ain't got to worry about all the outside stuff and, you know, the distractions per se, and he can go hoop, you know. Um, I don't know, I don't know what that's, that's too, I, I really, I don't, I don't know. I'm going to ask who's and see. I don't know, man. Brad, what do you think about him? I don't know, man. You know, they look, you know, then he has the fashion side of him, you know, some people, people bash him, but it's, you know, pink sweaters he wears and, Who's who's good dude, man? Chase. Hey, Brad. Uh, big night from three for you guys. Um, knowing that there's a lot of guys on this roster who uh, haven't quite shot to their career norms yet, and maybe they could eventually by the end of the season. Was tonight kind of a glimpse at the potential of what you guys could be as a three point shooting team? Damn, Chase. Just say you're talking to me. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. 
No, for yeah, I think it just it's just a testament to our ball movement, you know. Um, you know, getting and shooting with confidence, man. I think I think in the first half we were getting some good looks. Some of them weren't falling. I think late in the second quarter, uh, when they went in that run, but I mean we're getting good shots, you know. Um uh, we're getting good shots, we're getting reps up in practice, you know, when we can and uh and coaches made it a point of emphasis, man. We gotta we gotta make sure we get threes up. You know, the only way we do that is we get stops. We play fast, you know, we play with a purpose, you know, we can't just be out here doing nothing and, you know, playing with no type of IQ, you know, uh, understanding what, what our high percentage shots are, who our high percentage shooters are and, and get them the ball. Um, you know, we don't, we don't try to complicate it. At least over the last few games, we haven't, you know, we try to simplify it as much as possible, um, play fast and shoot with confidence. So tonight, yes, yeah, probably a testament to who we can be, but we still, obviously we could be better for sure. Neil. Hey, Brad, what was the conversation like at halftime? Obviously, that second quarter was, you know, not what you guys wanted. Uh, I mean, we were disappointed in ourselves um, because we just – we knew the zone was coming and we just kind of got real stagnant. We, we allowed it to bother us. We allowed the referees to bother us. We allowed everything besides the game, you know, to kind of affect our play. Uh, we kind of just said, you know, let's, let's nip that in the bud. Let's focus on us. Let's control what we can control. And go hoop, be physical, you know, the game is called how it is, you know, don't worry about it. And, and we did that in the second half, you know, and I think we did a good job of it. And, you know, Denny started offensively, you know, struggled a little bit, started 0 of 6. Do you say anything to anyone, you know, struggling throughout the course of the game, or do you kind of just let them be and, you know, hope that they can figure it out like he was able to knock that three down? Uh, I was, I'm, I encourage guys, but I don't, I didn't, like, I don't pay attention to, then he shot attempts and, you know, if he, if he's over whatever, if he's 10 for 10, like I don't, uh, you know, I didn't really pay attention, pay any mind to that. You know, then he's, what I love is the fact that he continues to play hard, you know, regardless if he's making the missing shots. I think that's definitely a stepping stone for us uh, in the right direction. Uh, you know, not allowing how we play on offense to affect our defense and affect other parts of the game. Like Denny's one of our best defenders. You know, he still stayed engaged. He still was able to make big plays, big stops down the stretch, get some rebounds. Uh, and, you know, like I, like I always tell him, like, he's he's a constant learner. Like, every game is going to be it's going to be different for him, you know, and, and we're asking him to play point. You know, we're asking him to play make. We're asking him to play the four. We're asking him to set screen. We're asking him to do a lot. So we're throwing a lot at him, and he's done an excellent job of, of handling it, you know, um, as best as he can. Thanks, Brad. All right, that's all the time I got for Brad tonight. Appreciate you. Birthday shout out to my pops. Pops turned 65 today. Love you, my man. At the very start of the season, you said you really wanted to focus on the leadership aspect and how can your growth and everything. I'm sure it doesn't feel like it in the moment, but have these past couple of games where you guys are really relying on the rotation people, does it almost feel like an opportunity for you in a way? Uh, I mean, in a sense, to lead a little bit more. Um, you know, because we don't really have that many voices right now. Um, you know, I think, you know, I've tried my best to lead most of the season um, just from the jump, um, particularly from the defensive end. Um, but uh, getting more confident with just, you know, just speaking to everybody, really. Um, you know, I'm not trying to make this about me, but not trying to hold my tongue, but just like, you know, if I see something, just say it, you know, whether it's coaches, players, um, and I feel like that's the way it has to be, uh, not particularly just me, but uh, everybody has to be a leader. Um, you know, if everybody can be a leader, everybody can say something to somebody, hold each other accountable without, you know, taking it as, um, you know, somebody hating on you or something. Um, that's when, like, good teams really um, come alive. And, um, you know, for me, I'm just really just trying to, you know, continue to lead. You know, I've said it from day one. Um, you know, I have – you know, pretty good amount of experience in this league, um, you know, especially in the winning department. So, um, and this is what I've been trying to do all year. What's been the difference in the offense for, uh, for the past few games? Uh, I mean, I'm just looking. I'm just being a really aggressive, honestly. Um, you know, I'm just really just, you know, put my head down, whether that's trying to get to the rim. Um 
you know, taking an open three if it's there, but if not, just not trying to settle. Um, you know, I've had a lot of success, you know, getting to the rim and um, if a shot's not there, um, find a teammate that's open. Um, you know, so I'm really playing. Um, I'm not saying forcing the issue, but I'm not reacting to what the defense is kind of doing. I'm kind of just going out and, you know, being the aggressor. So. Is that a natural mind shift for you? Uh, yeah, in a sense. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, if you look at me in my first two years in the league, I had that type of mentality, um, you know, because I was in that situation, you know, to be, a, you know, a first or second option those first two years. Um, and obviously that, you know, scaled back year after year after year. Um, but, um, you know, I, I'm just in a great situation here in Washington and um, the coaching staff believes in me. Um, your players believe in me um, and um, just having fun, honestly, just having, having a lot of fun. So. How much do you enjoy the opportunity to take big shots like you uh, do? You know, I love it and I hate it at the same time because um, I'd rather win by 15 and not have those type of opportunities because, you know, it's a lot of stress, honestly. Um, but at the same time, I do love it because, um, you know, I just feel like I'm built for those type of moments. Um, just all the adversity that I've been through in my entire life. Um, you know, it's just like, just go out there and just, you know, see what happens at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's either going to be a make or a miss, you know, and that's just how my approach is. And, um, that kind of just helps me, uh, just ease, you know, tensions during those types of times in the game because it's like, okay, it's only two options. One or the other is going to happen. And, um, you know, I put up a lot of reps and I got a lot of confidence in myself and I just, you know, uh, just try to knock them down. Our, our perceptions are what we see. And when we see you, we don't see any stress. Mm -hmm. uh, nah, I got a lot of stress all the time, for sure. I mean, I'm human. Well, I mean, I do a good job of hiding it, for sure, but um, you know, every every human has anxiety, depressions, stress at all times. I mean, I'm sure you got stress, you know what I'm saying? So um it's too good job of hiding it, I guess. <laughs> Novice Bertrand sometimes talks about the hoop appearing bigger when he's locked in. Is that kind of the sensation you have too when you're locked in or no? Oh I mean, that's a hard uh I mean, I, I get what he's saying for sure. Um, I don't really think about it like that, honestly. I just, I don't know. This is basketball to me. I just kind of just try to be out there just flowing. And, um, you know, especially if I got a little run in me, I feel more confident, um, you know, in myself for sure. You know, that's everybody. So. How great is the ball? Uh, I mean, extremely. Uh, I think, man, the past – two or three games, three games, we've had great ball movement. Um, probably some of the best of this of, of our season. Um, but, you know, particularly tonight in this fourth quarter, we just did a great job of just reading and reacting. Um, you know, Brad did a phenomenal job getting downhill and, um, <clears throat> you know, just making that simple pe simple play. Or, um, you know, if somebody's open, you don't, you just pass them the ball. It's simple. You know, uh, a lot of times uh, within this game, we make it really difficult. Um, you know, because we think too much, but if you just kind of just sit back and, you know, think it's just basketball, you know, just make the simple play ahead of you, it gets easier for you. Is there a part of you that, don't get me wrong, this is a big market, really is population wise, but is there any part of you that enjoys being a little less out of the, the national spotlight in Washington as opposed to LA with what's considered a glamour franchise? Maybe? Mm, I mean, coming from a, a bigger market, um, I mean, it's definitely you no know, pros and cons for sure. Um, but I don't know. I mean, honestly, I'm enjoying my time here. Um, yeah, that's kind of a tough question. Yeah. I mean, you always have a good question. So, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jason. Hey, 
Kuz, we hear all the time about how important fit is and situation is for players. You mentioned this being a great situation for you. Um, just how does it feel to have, have changed teams and be in a, what you feel like is a great situation for you? Well, I mean, that's that's the name of the game in um, professional basketball. Um, you know, fit and opportunity is everything in this league. You know, uh, there's a reason why there's only 450 of us uh, at a given time playing basketball because, you know, it's hard as hell to play at this level. And um, I'm a firm believer, you know, if you're a confident person and player and you're in an opportunity to succeed and the coaches put you in the right position, there's no reason why you can't, you know, go out there and be who you want to be in this league because, you know, if you have people behind you, you have people that, uh, a team that allows you to, you know, get touches and um, be a part of things and you're confident and hungry, I mean, you're going to succeed. Um, you know, this is you know, a sport where um, everything is about confidence because, you know, this is a sport where you have extreme highs, you know, and extreme lows at the same time. But um, if you're in a position, um, you know, like I'm in right now, being fortunate enough and, you know, have people that believe in me, um, you know, you kind of see, you kind of see what I can do, so. And um, you guys had a, a huge night from three. You know, it hasn't been the biggest strength for you guys. Finally. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, so what can you what can you take away from a night like this? And um, do you believe that, you know, this is more indicative of the team that you can be when it comes to shooting from the outside? Uh, I mean, honestly, I don't know. We've been so up and down this year. I just hope the ball going in the next game, honestly. Um, you know, we've had so many games this year where if we can just shoot league average you're handling teams and um, you know that's been a part of you know some of our struggles this year and we're aware of it you know outside of you know falling off defensively but um you know if we can just just hit some hit some threes we'll be all right and um you know we got guys that come in the gym and everybody's working it's not like people aren't coming in the gym and working um you know i think you know tonight it was a you know, a game where, you know, we got great shot selection from three. You know, I think we got a lot of wide open good looks um, that could have contributed to it. But, um, you know, we got to do it night in, night out. And, um, you know, if we can do that, we're going to give ourselves a chance to win if we can defend as well. Christos. Hey, who's great game, first of all. Uh, can you tell us about uh, the confidence level and the mindset that you placed every time you step on the floor? Uh, yeah, I mean, like I kind of said before, um, you know, when you're playing in the, the highest level uh, athletically in a sport, um, everybody's kind of really equal. And the thing that separates you is your mindset and your confidence. And every time I'm on the court, no matter who I'm on the court with, um, I believe that I'm the best player on the court. And you have to have that mindset. You know, there's a reason why it's only 450 of us. And there's a reason why, you know, if it was easy, everybody would be in the NBA. So, um, you know, just having confidence in myself, going out there competing and, um, you know, just having a effort mentality kind of so. And speaking about your partnership with Brad, what did you see about uh, the biggest development through the season so far? Uh, I mean, my, my favorite thing about Brad is, man, he's just so low maintenance and, um, you know, he'll let you rock out. Like, he's he's not one of the stars in this league where, you know, you I watch a lot of basketball and um, he's just super laid back. You know, he's not he's not on you if you take a, a bad shot. Um, you know, maybe if you turn the ball over, you're, you know, BSing for sure. You know, that's what leaders do. But, um, you know, he's 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 been great for me because he just allowed me to come in and just hoop and just be myself, um, not really stressing so much. And uh, I love playing with him. Um, you know, I love playing with him. So, you know, it's been great for my career and I'm just blessed to, you know, have a teammate like that. Thank you very much. Last question, quick to Iran. Um, Kuz, uh, Denny had a career high with uh, eight assists today. Um, found you a couple of times and then also being 0 for 6 you found him for that big three in the fourth quarter all of this uh, on his birthday so <coughs> are, are, is that part of his growth uh, yeah man um, Dean's my guy man um, 
you know, I, I see a lot of my, my kind of younger self in him, you know, someone that is, you know, talented, but, you know, overthinks a lot and, um, you know, can kind of get in their own way with it, with, you know, their being in their own head. And, uh, you know, I just tried to get on them all, all game. Like, you know, it was a point in time, it was like 644 in the fourth. And he was like, you know, I'm getting cooked. I'm like, what do you mean you get cooked? He was like, you know, defense, offense. I'm like, yo, best part about it is you got six minutes to turn around. And, um, you know, my favorite thing about him is, you know, like he's really receptive to criticism. And, um, you know, I'm just here to try to help him out. You know, he's a good kid and uh, I'm very happy for him that, you know, once he gets his brain right, everything comes together, it's going to be dope. It's going to be really dope to see because he can do a lot of different things on the court and he's uh, extremely talented. So.